Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be drawing two sketches of the same subject with different styles and techniques. So I will be spending more time on the first one, doing the pencil sketch first, followed by the line work and the painting, whilst the second sketch will be much quicker, starting straight away with paint no pencil outlines first. Okay, so this is the refer reference photo of an Oden restaurant in no Tokyo, Japan. And I just showed you the two points where all these lines are converging to on the horizon line. So here I'm using my pencil to estimate where the horizon line is and then I'm um, trying to visualize how high this um, building will be. I find this to be a very interesting street corner um, in Tokyo with lots of beautiful details, colors, lighting and shadows so you can find the link to this reference photo in the video description down below as well as the materials that i'm using in this video so this first sketch took me a total of five hours to complete so i won't be showing you the whole real-time process here but i will show you most of the second sketch process because that one was much quicker so this piece involves the two-point perspective so all these lines on the building are actually converging to two different points on the horizon line and the left side point is actually a bit off the page if you noticed so i'm using a ruler to kind of help me with the lines a little with this pencil sketch and for this version of the sketch i want it to be more clean and accurate but at the same time i don't want it to be super duper clean and like super straight lines either so i'm using a ruler for some of the pencil lines but later I won't be using the ruler with the pen outlines. So this is one of the more detailed pencil drawings that I have done and it usually it doesn't take me as much time but this one took me about 45 minutes to complete just a pencil sketch and I personally don't like to trace a picture or um, using too much of a ruler because I think that um, 
freehand drawing can add more character to the drawing. And disclaimer, if you are an architecture student and looking to do architectural drawings that need to be super accurate, please do um, use a ruler. I have nothing against rulers. And I am not an architect, by the way. I just enjoy drawing buildings. And um, But I don't just draw buildings, but this is what I have been doing a lot of recently. So maybe I should try other subjects on this channel, like maybe drawing food, um, maybe practicing more figures. So if you have any suggestions, do comment down below as well. So I didn't provide enough space for two lamps on the left side like we see in the photograph. So we'll just settle with one. And I also drew this lamp a little crooked, um, sort of balancing out the straightness of the main building. So you see I used the ruler for the main building, but um, for the lamp I chose not to use the ruler even though I knew that such a long straight line would become crooked because I wanted it to be crooked. To me, balance is the key, not too loose and not too neat. Sometimes I find it hard to achieve that balance. Like recently, I've been making my drawings a little too loose in my opinion especially when I don't have a lot of time on my hands. So I do these quick and um, loose sketches. And then when I have more time, I make it a little too neat and too detailed, um, whatever, whatever that means to you, because how detailed is too detailed, right? So where is the comfortable middle ground? And that is something that I am still discovering myself. And I believe a lot of artists are discovering as they go. Although I think that this particular piece um, sits pretty balanced, in my opinion. So here I'm done with the pencil sketch. And so you can compare this sketch with the second looser sketch, the quicker one and let me know what you think down in the comments. All right, so I used a kneadable eraser to lighten that pencil sketch a little bit. Before I started using my um, fountain pen, which is the Lamy Safari with a medium nib. And inside this pen, I have waterproof sorry, water-resistant ink um, from uh, Noodlers. I have provided all the links down in the description if you are interested in my materials. And I haven't been changing my gear a lot, so I, I, I keep using the same thing that I'm comfortable with. And I'm quite happy with that. Although I am always open to try new things, I love getting new art supplies and getting excited trying a new instrument, media, paper, and it's just um, when you try too many things, you don't really have a lot of time left to get the serious, 
the serious work done. So I always try to resist that urge to keep buying new stuff. You know, it's、um, balance is the key. So right now, this part, the inking part, is the really easy part for me, because I have spent so much time with the pencil sketch, and it's、um, really I already know where everything is. So basically, I'm just tracing out all that, all those lines with the pen, and I can even refine the perspective a little in some places. And as mentioned before, I'm using this pen to draw these wavy lines, and I'm not using any rulers at all. So I think many people are kind of drawn to loose sketching、um, because it is fun to just let loose, isn't it? And sometimes I feel like I'm stuck in my head, like I'm thinking too much. And then I sketch something loose, and it kind of frees up my mind. And it's kind of like、um, letting go of the rules and responsibilities, and just arriving in this moment to draw this thing, to study it, and just to enjoy it. Of course, this particular drawing isn't the loosest, loosest sketch. And it's a bit more contained, and but the great thing about it is that we can add lots of details because we are just taking our time and we're observing the subject for a longer period and in more detail. So it's great if you have a lot of time on your hands, then you can do this kind of sketching, which is like adding more details and being more. Neat and contained.、Um, when compared to、um, like a timed sketch, if you've watched my previous video, I did a timed sketch, just really quick sketching and just limiting the time that I can spend on one subject. So it becomes、um, you have to be really loose and not be、um, too not get too caught up in the small details. Just Um, just trying to capture the essence. So that's what we are going to try to do in the second sketch after we're done with this sketch.
So I don't usually draw any details of the interior of the building, if I can, but today even the windows are getting some details, and that window there I am getting, I'm drawing some um, details such as the lamp and that chair, but I'm not drawing everything, just some of the details, and because that window is a main. A main focal point, so some additional details is actually a good thing. There are a lot of perspective lines on the building in the photo, and I'm adding some of that here, not all of them, um, because I'm afraid that it might be too overwhelming for the viewer, and I'm also not adding detail uh, on the lower door the lower half not on all the bit on the windows because i don't want to overwhelm the viewer as well with too much detail do you think it has enough detail so i decided i would stop adding details and i rubbed off all the pencil pencil um, sketch lines and then i came in to add a few japanese words on the lantern. Now we are going to start painting with the watercolors. And in the photo, um, sunlight is coming from the top right so the t the right side um, sunlight is stronger so it should be brighter and it should be warmer and the photo also has a sort of cloudy sky so I am going to add a blue sky with clouds so that is um, just because I want some blue on the sky and I don't want it to be like completely white So 
So now I am wetting some areas in the sky first where the clouds will be. And after I have wet those areas, I will then add in the blue paint around those wet patches, which become the clouds. So this blue is a mixture of cerulean blue and compost blue. Then I added some grey shadows to the clouds. So the paper was starting to dry already, so I re-wet some of the cloud areas before adding the grey paint. And this grey paint is a mixture of ultramarine, burnt umber and burnt sienna. Next, I'm painting the greens, first with a light wash of green paint, which is a mixture of sap green and yellow ochre. And then I came in with a different brush and I mixed sap green with ultramarine to create a darker green and then I added some shadows to the greens. After that first layer is done, and hopefully before it dries, I add a second or third layer of green to create these deeper shadows. Moving on to the next color, which is the red of that building. And I mixed 
vermilion hue and rose matter to get this um, light orangey red color and the first layer that I'm doing is a very watered down red and because that towards the top of that building there is more light shining and as we go down that building there are more shadows so I use more pigment and less water so that creates sort of a, a gradient and I also um, like to change up the ratio of that um, rose matter to vermilion and uh, sometimes I make it more red sometimes I make it more orange so it's not exactly the same every time I mix and that's quite natural for watercolor and I think it's a uh, a very interesting thing to have different ratios of um, the same two paints or three paints and sort of making one surface look more varied and more interesting. Here on the right side, I'm adding some permanent yellow deep to make it even more orange and lighter so that it simulates like the sunlight as in the photo. Now I'm painting that awning a green-blue color, which is a mixture of sap green, cerulean blue, and compost blue.
Next, I'm introducing a brown wood color, which is a mixture of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. One of the prominent colors besides the red is the dark blue lines which surround the door and the windows as well as that little roof it's like a fake roof for that lamp it's like a, a tiny little roof for that tiny little lamp above the door and i'm coloring that in now i'm painting that in now and it is actually a mixture of ultramarine deep, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. So now I'm actually using that same dark blue mixture, but I changed the ratio um, to include less blue and more burnt umber or burnt sienna so that paint becomes more gray instead of blue and now I'm painting in the lamps and I will also use this same mixture for lots of the shadows Alright, so now I'm painting the windows and door with three different paints using three different brushes. So I like to, I find it more convenient to have different brushes for each color when I'm doing this. Um, it's faster and it's easier to sort of mix colors together and it's really fun because um, I'm just trying to get an abstract representation of the interior and I'm not trying to copy it exactly and these are all the same paints that we used before
And finally here I'm adding some shadows to the floor and these shadows on the left are very um, obvious but on the right side we have shadows that are actually coming from buildings that are outside of the picture so we can't really see it so the right side is not actually completely in sunlight there's actually a lot of shadows as well So I just painted in some of those Japanese words and I'm not really great at calligraphy especially when it's so tiny so on the left side on this signboard here I just added some dots that look like they are words and on the lantern I actually quite liked how that turned out. So now I'm adding some splashes of paint, the final finishing touches. And it's done. So a total of slightly less than five hours was spent to draw this piece and I love how it turned out. But we are still going to do our second sketch and see if, if we take a looser approach to this building, um, what kind of sketch will we get and what, what we can learn from it. So I'm going to be doing the second sketch with the same paper and the same materials. I will also be using similar paint mixes. And for this piece, we're going to start with the paint first before adding the outlines. Here I'm mixing all the colors out first. I will be using four different color mixes. This one with the dark Blue is a, a mixture of ultramarine deep, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. The light blue is compost blue plus cerulean blue. And then I added some sap green, so it became a sort of blue-green color. And then, um, as usual, the green color that I usually use is the light green um, mixture of sap green uh, and yellow ochre. And of course, the red color is a mixture of vermilion hue plus rose mather. Now I am wetting the paper first with a large wet brush. And I'm making sure that it's really wet because this paper dries pretty fast for me. And it's interesting when you paint in different locations. Um, paint dries at different rates so you tend to get different results just from painting in a different location with watercolors and 
I timed each of the phases for this sketch so that I didn't spend too much time on this sketch. I wanted it to be loose and not too detailed. I think sometimes I also suffer from blank paper anxiety. And I find that when I turn on the timer, it gives me that little push to just start painting or start sketching. And maybe it's training from all those years of, you know, school exams and stuff. But I, I find that it works for me when I start to procrastinate and don't want to start sketching something that I've been thinking about sketching for too long. Um, maybe you can try it if it works. Um, if you haven't tried it before, just start a timer and just start. You can't um, procrastinate any longer because you have a timer. So as you can see, I started with the red building first, painting in the basic shape of the building. And in this case, the windows are really big, so I'm careful to sort of paint around them. And then after I have done with the red color, then I just continue with the other paints that I've mixed before this. So it's sort of like sketching with watercolors instead of with a pencil. And if you haven't done this before, I know I always say it, but it looks, this process looks kind of messy and maybe you think it's ugly. Well, it's fine. To me, um, once you get used to it, it's a normal part of the process. So you just have to learn to stick with it. And um, the ugly part is part of the process to becoming beautiful. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm going to stop talking now.
All right, so we are done with the first layer after about seven to eight minutes. And now I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the sky. So the paper gets really damp after that first layer but it dries in just a few minutes here and you may choose to use a blow dryer if it is drying too slowly. So I just started the timer for the next phase which is the pen outlines. For this piece, I am also doing wavy lines and broken lines, just like the first sketch, but I'm going a little bit faster overall. As well as I am trying to, I'm actually trying to distort the perspective on this piece. And uh, I actually love how crooked the shape of the building um, looks, the shape of the, the um, watercolor. Um, first layer that I did. I actually like how it's crooked. So I intentionally um, made the left side of the building kind of diverge out slightly and then I uh, made the middle section tip to the right a little bit. So it kind of looks um, like it's a crooked building um, but I think it adds some character and I, I find that really appealing. Um, even though it's like imperfect, I think it's fun and it's, um, it makes it look looser. I am giving myself only 11 minutes for the, the outlines here, which won't be enough, of course. So this is a timed approach to give me that push to be faster but in a sort of relaxed way so just try your best if you don't finish in time just add a few more minutes no big deal I won't be speeding up this second sketch process so you can follow along and sketch with me if you like
I am very satisfied with that very crooked lamppost. And for this sketch, I made more room on the left side, so I have space for both of the lamps. And I actually moved the building more towards the right side, and I kind of like this composition a little bit more than the first one. So you get to you'll get to see and compare both sketches side by side later once this one is done. So I think the in terms of composition, it has a slight. Uh, this one is slightly better, um, but you can tell me what your opinion is down in the comments below as well. So the timer went off after those 11 minutes and we need so much more details. So I'm adding another five minutes for the outlines.
All right, so that extra five minutes was enough and we are done with the outlines and I'm quite happy with it, although it does have fewer details. So for this last phase, finally, I'm going to uh, give myself 15 minutes on the timer. I'm not sure if it will be enough. I wasn't sure. But we will give it a go and we will see if it is enough. Again, I won't be speeding up this part, so feel free to paint along with me. Or if you enjoy watching it at a higher speed, you can also adjust the playback speed. And for this part, I am also using the same paints as before, so I won't be talking about that in this part.
I made a mistake and painted over that banner on that lamppost with the green and made it part of the tree. So I only just realized that at this part. So I will not be able to get it white in color anymore unless I use like white gouache. It is not a big detail, but I will try to correct that after this. I guess mistakes can happen more often when you are in a rush and I guess that is the downside of doing sketches with a set time limit. So, but not to worry, the most important thing is to finish the piece. Don't let the mistakes bog you down. I know it does to me sometimes, but the good thing about this mistake you have to think about the positive side, is that I will never forget to leave space for the banners in my future sketches. That's the good thing. Minor mistakes are also an opportunity for you to um, maybe take out your skills try and use whatever you have maybe you can use gouache maybe you will lift that paint off and yeah it's part of the painting process no artist goes through life without mistakes in their art however i wouldn't say that every accident um, every mistake is a ha happy accident, like Bob Ross says. Um, I think mistakes like these are kind of ugly and you know, sad accidents, you know. I wouldn't call it a happy accident, not a happy incident at all. Um, oftentimes you feel kind of demotivated when you make mistakes. And that is true for everyone, I think. Um, so yeah i think it is better for us to think of mistakes as stepping stones to becoming better in art or in life and i, I think it's good to not be afraid to make mistakes because mistakes are very often inevitable inevitable in when we pursue something, anything at all, it is inevitable that we will make mistakes. And it is all about how we look at these mistakes and how we proceed from there.
All right, so the timer went off after 15 minutes, and I am not going to time myself anymore. I still need to correct that banner, and there are still a lot of things I need to do. But it's coming along pretty well. Um, I ignored that banner and just kept painting all the other stuff, but I will come in to correct that in a while. Now I'm adding some of those shadows on the floor and also to the bottom half of that building. So I'm finally coming in to correct that banner and I decided not to use any gouache, any white gouache. So I just used a wet brush to sort of lift all that green off the banner. And I added more red to the top and bottom. And this banner is actually supposed to be white in the center right but we can't get back that white unless we use um, gouache it depends on your paper sometimes it is very easy to lift the paint um, on certain paper but this was the best i could do so i substituted that white color with a blue
Alright, so we've come to the final phase of this sketch and I'm just adding some paint splatters. I nearly forgot to add shadows to that tiny roof or awning above that, um, above the door. So I came in later to add that shadow. Overall, I am actually quite happy with this second sketch um, because I think that it is interesting, it has more movement, and composition is a little bit better than the first one, I think. I like the energy in this second sketch, but somehow, maybe because it's Japan, maybe it's Tokyo, I think that the first sketch sort of suits the place a little bit more because it is more neat and detailed which maybe that is more the essence of the place so let me know what you think in the comments down below thank you so much for watching I will see you in the next one.